Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. This is my review for The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, Season 11, Episode 17. Okay, let's get into it. Y'all know first things first that we have not done, so I'll read T. I didn't click the wrong button. Uh, make sure to subscribe to my channel to become a whole J Bird, J Bird, dun 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 dun, and all that goodness and stuff. Do not forget to also like the video, <laughs> comment in the comment section. You can hit the share button to share it on your social media. You can relax and relate and release to send yourself and everyone around you. And always inhale and exhale because life is stressful. And we have to breathe, okay? Uh, Y'all can follow me on social media at J underscore Lee's underscore corner on IG. It is J Lee's corner on Twitter. Y'all know to like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. I'm tired and it's late. Uh, do not forget the ladies first panel. The ooh, ladies first, ladies first panel will be on tonight. It is on Nisi Dixon's channel at 9.15. So make sure to come have a good time with me and the ladies. Y'all know we have a great time every single Thursday. Well, every day. We talk every day, okay? So come and have be a part of our conversation of things and whatnot. Um, yeah. So... This episode was good, but also it felt like a filler episode, but I still enjoyed it and whatnot, so that's why I'm here with y'all, giving y'all the tea. But I'm only going to touch on things that, you know, happen in real life and not think that was like, okay, that was whatever. Like, Dory sitting around talking about how, oh, I'm planning the party for the wedding dress, you know, presentation, and it's raining. What can I do? fix it. I don't care. We had even um, Garcelle meeting with her like dating coach or whatever. You know, they're going to set her up on a little date. Okay, that's cool, cool, cool. Cute, cute, cute. Now we see Kathy and Vice Kyle, Lisa, and Erica over for facials. Okay? And I was like, oh, isn't it nice inviting some people over to your house? But you didn't invite Garcelle even though you did not show up to her dinner party and you did not tell her yourself, Kathy, you're getting on my nerve, Kathy. Why didn't you go to her party? Why did you miss Garcelle's party? And why did you not invite her over here? As in, I'm sorry for not showing up and not telling you. Isn't that proper good uh, guest etiquette, Kathy? I like Kathy, but Kathy, mm -mm, don't get on my bad side. Anyway, Erica came in a face full of makeup, which means she was not getting no facial. I'm my girl, bye. So we do see Erica and Kyle talk. It's like if a two-faced heifer talks to a lion heifer, this is what it would be. Okay, you can pick which one. They both be the in the transport. Anyway, Erica brings up how, you know, it's how you and Sutton, not Erica, Kyle brings up, how are you and Sutton doing, like, you know, the last time things weren't so good? Oh, no. No. The door is closed with me and Sutton, you know, nope. Mm -mm. I'm like, if you say so. So, as they're supposed to be talking about Sutton and Erica, Erica changes the subject. <sighs> you know, I have so much going on. You know, I can't really deal with Sutton. I have so much going on in life. <sighs> Tom's house was broken into. You know, he had to fight off the burglar. He then had to go to the hospital to have eye surgery. You know, my son then went over there. My son car then flipped five times. I have so much going I'm like, bitch, what? <laughs> Erica rambled that off like it was, I need some eggs, some milk, some bacon, some croissants, some orange juice. I need maybe some donuts. I need some butter. I need some some carrots, some pickles, some feta cheese, some heavy whipping cream. I'm like, what? Someone broke in Tom's house. Old ass, 79 year old, see now dementia having Tom. Tom confronted the robbers. Oh, see now dementia having Tom, who's oh, so he can't think, he can't do whatever. 
went and confronted the robbers. Okay, you know, then Tom had to have had to have eye surgery just for what? Oh my God, for what? Oh, because he has glaucoma, and so because of the stress, the glaucoma swelled up, and he had to have surgery. I was like, okay. She then said, my son had to go over there, okay, to help because I couldn't go. You know, I can't go over there, okay. And so my son went and on his way home, his car flipped over five times because it was snowing. She was like, what? Kyle was like, how do, how do you know? Like, who told you? So she said that the police called her. I'm guessing, I don't know. I mean, they still legally married. But she don't live there. I don't know. I don't leave that be. But when Kyle then say, well, when does when this happen? Oh, it was a few days ago. Like maybe Saturday. She's like, oh, so this happened before you went to Garcelle. She's like, well, yeah. She's like, oh, okay, you just didn't say. It's like, no, I just the same thing. And Kyle gonna say, Erica keeps doing this. You know, we'll be around her for days. And she won't say shit. And then days later, these huge events keep happening. They show when it was on that first trip or whatever. And she didn't say anything. And then five days later, she filed for divorce. And even with the time thing, time broke his ankle. And now two years or three years later, oh, no, with an ankle, a shoulder, a clavicle, a penis, oh, everything. He broke everything, okay? And now you was at Garcelle's and didn't say anything about your son damn near dying with car flipping over five times, and someone breaking into Tom's house. <sighs> the story sounds just unbelievable. I'm not saying she's lying. It just sounds unbelievable. Kyle, when you say something sounds unbelievable, you're saying they're lying. Kyle, that's why she had two faces. So when Kyle said, well, how did his car flip? Eric then said, oh, we know it was snowing. And she said, in Pasadena? He was, it was on a path. Oh, no, no, no. You know, he lives, you know, further out. But she never said where. I'm like, okay. Erica tells tall fable tales. So once upon a time in Google land, there lived a king named Ransom. And King Ransom wanted things for other people's property. Okay. He held ransoms. Get it? I'm like, you all fable tale land of Google? I can't. She tells fable tales all the time. Okay. I'm leave that be because I was like, it was some bullshit. We then see Kyle and Crystal meet up or whatever. I'm like, was this a meeting just for Crystal to show us that she is renovating her basement and it's gonna cost them a half a million dollars? When she said, Me, I'm frugal. My husband isn't. He like he wants to spend what is he he works hard to spend his money and so that's what he does. But to say that you will buy an expensive handbag that costs 35 grand, and that's me being frugal because the bag will appreciate in value over time. No, you just want that expensive ass bag. Because you know what else appreciates the money that's in your account sitting there creating interest. But I'm gonna leave that be. Um, even to say that the basement was gonna cost a million, but we got it down to five hundred thousand. Girl, that's not frugal. It's just not that spending money. And it's fine. It's y'all how much to spend, but I'm going to leave that be. Now, they then bring up Garcelle's party, okay? And Chris was going to say, yeah, it was like a pretend friendly event. You know, people were pretending to be friendly. And Kyle said, well, yeah, you know, I, I also feel like, you know, Garcelle saying that she was triggered by me bringing up how, you know, if you have something to say about someone, you know, say, say the issue to me and not to someone else or whatever. And how she brought up Garcelle then said, yeah, but you didn't do that with me with the whole, you know, um, charity thing, whatever. Um, to say, I thought we moved past it. I really thought we moved past it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I, no, because you still do shady shit, Kyle. And I don't think her thing was, well, let's bring that back up. But if you really feel that way, you would have never done to me what you did to me. So, which means you fake a fucking fugazi, Kyle. But we know this. Kyle is the fakest and the fugaziest Miss person that we know outside of Erica. Anyway, now, they also bring up Garcelle saying how she does not feel like part of the group. Okay, she feels like, you know, she's ostracized her son and Crystal. Crystal motherfucking ass then says, how I don't feel that way. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't see her being excluded. You know, I don't feel she's 
you know, that happens. You know, I don't think I am either. I'm not you old. <sighs> Crystal is literally a pick me. She's literally a pick me, be my friend, love me, help me kind of person. Because when she said to Sutton how Sutton was saying, like, I don't see color. So I don't see like these issues that other people see. Aaron Crystal then said, Yeah, because you don't live in that world. You don't you don't walk in them shoes. How can you say that to Sutton, but not get how Garcelle as a black woman feels ostracized in this room full of pale white women? How? How? You have blinders on, Crystal. You have pale skin blinders on because your skin matches theirs. Your eye. May your eyes may be different and your culture and heritage may be different, but the color of your skin matches them. She's the eyeball out, and y'all for sure make her feel that way all the fucking time. But I'm gonna leave that be. Even her saying, you know, what well, Garcelle must not have a lot of friends, she probably has really, really close, a small group of close friends, and she probably feels like you're either her best friend, and if you're not, y'all are not best friends, then she's an outsider. I was like, excuse me. How the fuck did you get there, Crystal? How? How did you get there? How? Where? 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 Did she ever tell you that? Did you know her friend circle? Did you know her well enough to say she doesn't have many friends? So she just isn't opening up to y'all. And I don't know how y'all can get closer if she's then offish. Oh, so this is Garcelle's fault. Garcelle's the issue because she doesn't want to be Crystal. There's a list that you're on. I mean, it's the fuck you crystal list. Okay, so you're the only one on it because that's your list. But you're still on my list of you of saying fuck you crystal. Okay, let's move on. Um, Kyle and Dorit's uh, have dinner with their husbands. Okay, and I'm a pop off screen because I have one bar. Uh, they go to dinner with their husbands and everything and whatnot. Okay, and we see in the kitchen, Kyle tell Dorit about Erica's. Car rolled an over story. Okay. The car rolled over. Skirt. Okay. And with that, you know, no, I'm not only the car rolled over story. The whole time robbery, surgery, kid rolled over car, all of that is what she told Dorit. And she was like, What? Oh, how did how did she know? I was like, I don't know. I don't know. That's what she told me. So Dorit then at the dinner is telling PK and Mauricio about what Kyle just told her. And they're like, what the fuck? So what? What? So PK then say, well, you know, Marisa, do you know about the, the first story of, of, of time? You know, getting hurt? He's like, well, no, what happened? I'm like, Kyle didn't tell you this shit? So Dorit and them then say, you know, the before, you know, time rolled off a hill and, and fell down and had a whole head injury, whatever, and, and all these things. And she said, then one thing, she said, you know, now she's done something different. And they bring up how the doctors wanted to operate on time, like his head, his skull, his brain, due to the accident. And she wouldn't allow them to do that, but she allowed them to fix his ankle. And then both pecan time, like she's lying. Like this shit don't add up. The math ain't mathing. The common ain't sensing. It's not true. She lying. Okay. Now PK also brings up not only is I'm not saying that she's just lying, I'm also saying time is lying and Erica just going along with his lies. Hence, she's lying too. Okay. And then Dorit brings up, I was, it's a crazy story. I, I get it's a crazy story, but I don't think Erica's lying. PK said it is immeasurable. <laughs> like it doesn't make any sense. It's not the math ain't gonna math that both her husband rolled down a hill in his car and for this car or whatever. And her son did too, driving to get the damn old man husband. No. No, the math ain't mathing, it's bullshit. And PK was, and even Marisa was like, no, like she, some stuff, God, shit ain't adding up. It just isn't. I'm like, the fact that PK and Mauricio are the voices of common sense to they dumb, dumb, ditty ass wives is hilarious to me. Y'all up here sucking the teeth of Erica for no reason. How can y'all not, y'all doubt it? Uh, Denise Richards last last season, just based off 
um, Brandy saying that they may have fucked around. You have fucking court documents showing her fucking husband sent 20 million to her LLC. And y'all believe that she ain't know nothing? She ain't know shit, but God forbid the uh, um the niece say she wasn't fucking around with Brandy. Oh, she's a whole fucking life. Y'all ran her down for filth last season for way less. And there is proof that Erica is a fucking liar. Okay? Because she's admitted to lying before. And y'all, I don't think she's lying. It sounds unbelievable, but I don't think she's lying. Y'all sucking the teeth for no fucking reason. She can't save you, make you, or break you. She poor now. You two hoes is rich. Y'all up and sucking from a poor lady's teeth. What is wrong with y'all? And I mean poor and made it out of our haters. But yeah, I'm leaving that be. Bullshit. Okay, making me mad. Now, PK brings up how he would love for Eric like to come out on top of this, you know, be great, great, great. However, she needs to break loose of the world she's been living in, okay, and get better footing and doing something different. And I'm like, what she do, but she ain't. So let her be, okay? Now, I wonder, Reed brings up how, you know, when she wouldn't let them do surgery on Tom's head, you know, they worked on his ankle. PK and Marisa was cracking up. Oh, no, you know, don't save the head of the fucking lawyer. Save the foot. <laughs> I was like, no. Because he, he like, <laughs> PK said, he's not a fucking soccer star. He's not a fucking soccer player. He's a 79-year-old lawyer. Yes, who picks to fix somebody's ankle and not work on the head injury? I'm a liar. A liar. And PK... And Dorit and Kyle and Rizzo are cracking up laughing at the lies Erica has told. And I'm like, honey, Erica, I think Erica posted on Twitter how watching this and watching them laugh at her, it hurt me so much. We don't care. We don't care. Boom, boom. Okay. Lastly, we had Dorit's little party for the wedding dresses. Everyone showed up. Okay, her house was decorated like a wedding reception. It was cute, cute, cute. But, oh my God, it's so nice in here. I'm like, it's not hard to hire a decorator to say, hey, make it look like a wedding reception. I mean, she did make it a safari. She did not bring in giraffes and, 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 and shit and build huts, you know, to make it to be a safari. It's like she made it a fucking wedding reception. It looked nice though. Anyway, um, we seen Sutton brought her boyfriend. Um, Kathy were her assistant. Harry showed up later. We rarely see Harry, but I'm like, I would rather see Harry than Lisa any day. Um, do I have the girls' looks? I, I thought I did. If I can quickly find them, I may show y'all really quickly, but I don't know if I have it right now because I did think they all look nice. Um, oh, yeah, I do have it. So, I will show y'all half of the people, okay, once uh, StreamYard lets it pop up and stuff. It'd be something, boom. So, you know, there is, what's that lady's name? Uh, Lisa and Crystal, her husband. And then you see Sutton. And the man behind Sutton is her boyfriend, okay? And I'm like, I didn't know Sutton had a boyfriend. I think I remember them maybe talking about it once or twice, but because they don't mention often, I was like, oh, sudden, you know, okay. Because he's nice looking, you know, for an older white man. It's fine. And on the other end, we have Kathy. Kathy's face looks great. Whoever does her makeup and her surgery or whatever, her face, you know, I mean, her face doesn't move much, but it's cute when it's made up. And then Kyle and then uh, Renna. I don't like Renna at all. Can't stand her. She gets on all my nerves. Anyway, um, oh, here's Garcelle. I've got a full one of Garcelle, too, because I loved her outfit of it all. It's running so slow. Boom. Okay. So, again, that's a wide shot, everyone. But Garcelle stands out to me. Anyway, they all are there and stuff. Okay. We see all the wedding dresses. It was five wedding dresses uh, that she showed. You know, she also had on um, one of the dresses. And then she did have like a little bridesmaid dress that I think her daughter was in. I didn't care about that too much, but it was what it was. But again, 
people like the dresses. You know, they look fine. You know, whatever. Wedding dresses. But, you know, these are my dresses. You know, I didn't just put my name on something. Like, these are my ideas and my designs. Okay. If you say so. But even... Um, Sutton and Erica got a long ish meaning when Sutton walked in with her boyfriend and she spoke to Erica, Erica spoke back, and they like stood next to each other for like a minute, so it wasn't as awkward as the party at Garcelle's house. What I will say that angered me is the fact that Kathy showed up to this party but did not show up to Garcelle's, and not only that, she I'm just mad because she didn't tell Garza herself she wasn't coming. So, Kathy, I got my eye on you. I do. So, all the ladies are sitting around talking and laughing. Well, not Erica and Lisa. Erica and Lisa was at the table sitting around doing nothing. Um, But, again, yeah, they laughing, having a good time. Joke, joke, joke. Ha, ha, ha. Fun time being had. Then Kyle say... Yeah, Garcelle, you know, you said something on the uh, interview that was kind of weird or whatever. So she brings up how Garcelle did anything on Ellen. And when they asked her about how her time was going on the show, she said, they're coming for me. Let me say that, but let them come for me because I'm ready, is what she said. And they then found the issue in that. Doree going to say, why would you say that? Now, first of all, the fact that Garcelle eyeball Kyle. Like, Kyle, bitch, why would you even bring it up as if it's an issue? That's why you are a two-faced heifer that we don't like, okay? But when Doree said, well, why would you say that? Like, why would you say that someone's coming for you? And Garcelle said, because you came for me right when I did the interview. So the interview was done right after the lip launch when she got into it with Dorit. She's like, what you did. And she didn't say they all, by Kyle, made it seem like. She said, they're coming for me. I'll just say that, but I'm ready. Meaning, the last time we was all together, bitch, you came for me. Okay, you did. And I had issue with that. So that's why I said that and did not say more. Because on these interviews, they can't give away stuff but they can say how they feel about, you know, things in general. So I'm looking like, why are y'all acting dumb? And then when Doree, old punk ass, gonna say in her confessional, <sighs> Garcelle does things to be provocative. She says things to be, to, be, to be provocative to seem more interesting. I say, bitch, did Doree just say that somebody does things to seem more interesting? The most boringest bitch on the show. You may be able to dress, but you're still boring, Doree. You are still like bore. Boring. Boring. Okay. Piss me off. Dorito chip. Fritos. Get out of my face with that bullshit, okay? Anyway. So, you know. Fuck you, Dorit. Anyway, you know, Garcelle, like, look, why am I not allowed to have my own opinion on how I feel, okay? If my opinion, you know, doesn't satisfy you, you have an issue with it. You said, I have a right to have my own opinion on how I feel. Dorit, they're going to say, I speak four languages. And that doesn't make sense in any of them. I was like, Dorit, you don't make sense in any language, okay? In English, and French, and Spanish, okay? In Ebonics. In any other, in, in, in any language, uh, in, in Japanese and Chinese, any of them, okay, anything you make sense in nothing, anyway. Garcelle, like, you know, whatever is all I know is, and say, you know, you came after me that day, and only Sutton was the only one to speak up for me that day. Nobody else here uh, stood up for me, and no one ever takes my side. Now, Dorit then say, Well, I don't, I don't feel that way. And Garcelle said, that's fine, but I do. That's how I said I felt. And that's the issue. They keep taking issue with how she's telling them that she feels. You can make someone feel a way, and they have a right to express that. And that's the issue. They are invalidating how she's feeling by saying, well, I don't feel the way. Bitch, it ain't about you. I don't care how you feel about how I feel. I care how I feel about how I feel. That's what matters, and that's what makes them dumb, that they can't comprehend. She tell y'all how she feels, and y'all ignore it because that ain't how y'all feel. 
it's stupid. It's like it's like someone saying, I got shot and it hurts. And then you say, well, I didn't get hurt. Bitch, you didn't get shot. You know what I'm saying? It's stupid. Anyway, now the whole time, Lisa Renna and Lionel Erica are watching this happen. And Erica says to Renna, hey, you want to get up over there? She was like, no, no, not getting involved. You know what I'm saying? Garcelle's getting called out for being shady and taking jabs. And so she's a big girl. She can, she can have to read. And this is why I hope and pray Garcelle reads surgical lips of Renna for fucking filth at the reunion. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope so. Okay. Anyway, they then say to Garcelle, well, you should be more direct. Okay. You should be more direct. And she's like, but I've said that you talk too much. Well, no, you know, you should be more. Oh, so I should say more. Okay. Well, Doreen, shut the fuck up. She's like, see, that works. This was going to happen. She's going to say those things. They're going to then call her aggressive. That's the bullshit. They're, they're gaslighting her and trying to lit, light a match under her. Because I guarantee you, when black women are direct, y'all call us aggressive. And she's been trying to be nice in how she says shit, and y'all still don't like it. And once she go for the jugular watch, they call her aggressive or mean or nasty. Anyway, that was the whole episode of whatever. They're gonna piss me off, but it's gonna be fine. Okay, we're gonna let it be. I hope you enjoyed this review. Do not forget to comment in the comment section, share this video, like the video, and I will see y'all and talk to y'all later. Peace.